Hey, Reason users, I am the guy who used to go by Nectar Junkie, and now I no longer can use my Nectar because I travel so much, so I have learned to control Reason using my Android phone. This is also available on iOS, and it's a $12 software. You program the buttons all yourself, and this is, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you what we have going here. So check this out. Let's get playing. All right, so show me the main mixer. Show me the rack. Show me the sequencer. Show all. Flip the rack around. All right. I've got my mutes. I've got this little setup here so that I can get some mutes going. Let's turn some drums off. Sax goes off. Put the drums back in. Go back to the rack. Stop. Play. Stop. Rewind. Re record. All of that stuff. You can program all of it, and I am going to show you now how this works. If you like this video, I'm gonna be doing more stuff. It's been years, but I'm starting to do some more stuff. So if you wanna like and subscribe, it's gonna be more reason-oriented content. I'm gonna change the channel name, but for now, hopefully you're excited enough to watch through and check out how the components work. All right, so the first thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and get ourselves set up with the software that we need. So the first thing we're gonna look at is we're going to the touch-portal.com website. That is the name of the software. You go ahead and you go to the download. I'm not gonna uninstall but it was a pretty easy install. The one thing was that it did have a firewall extension that I had to, uh, exception that I had to put in, but it walked me through it. It seems to be pretty straightforward what you need to do. In addition is you're gonna go ahead and set it up on your phone. This is from the Android store for me. Uh, when you install it, uh, it needs to be on the same network as your computer does, because I have two at home and that was another little thing, but it'll also tell you as well if that is out of sync. The correct order to do it is to do the software on your computer first and then the phone, uh, but I think it works either way and I hope as Reason users that you can go through a pretty install process without my assistant because the next part is the more complicated part. So we're gonna go ahead and flip some stuff around in OBS and I'm gonna start showing you where the real magic starts happening. So this, when you download the software and install it. This is what it looks like on your desktop. Just so you know that what we're working with here is the desktop because it looks real similar to the phone at times. So with your desktop app, uh, the things that you can do here, and we're gonna talk about it, sending it to the phone, but some of it shows up on your phone immediately and some doesn't. But let's just talk about what we have here. We can change the grid settings, add as many rows and columns as you want. If you had a tablet, you have more space for it, but just add rows and columns. And then if you move away, um, and it doesn't delete them. If I just changed it to three there, it doesn't delete what I already had there. Uh, you have to have the 1299 version in order to add unlimited pages, and for our use, it doesn't work without it. And by the way, the paying is on the phone. All right, so if we wanted to add new page, this is where we add a new a new page full of buttons. So when we're in this desktop app and we navigate to our different things, this is basically building and assigning what we have here. So let's go ahead and start talking about how the buttons are actually assigned in this. And I'm gonna go ahead and go to, actually let me go to the reason um, this is my transport page because these are things that are built into Reason. So let's look at buttons, okay? So when we open a button, there's this editing window. On the right-hand side, it's all visual properties of it. Um, and you can play around with this. There's not really anything here that I think I need to go that deep into. Uh, when you play around, you'll find you change the colors, the font sizes, little icons. You can add your own icons and all of that. That's fantastic. What's really, really the important two pieces or the important piece is what the button does. And so for reason, everything that we're doing is sending a virtual key press. And all that means, if you go ahead and edit, you'll notice is that if you're familiar with the function keys in reason is that uh, by default, the main mixer is on F5. So if we go ahead and go into editing this, then you'll see what this looks like. This window pops up and we can just assign any of the keys that can be pressed, including ones that aren't on your computer. And so I don't have a number pad on my computer and I can assign them here. Now, 
you may or may not know that in Reason, you can assign any letter to anything on in Reason. I'm not going to talk about how to do that in this video because it's just too long. If you know how to do it, that's great. I'll do another video about that later. But this, so we would assign F5, and that is our main mixer. So let's look at what I have as the other ones. The sequencer is F7. I'd assigned it the same way. This button is the play button, which is space. And all you need to do to define a new button is just hit there, you just type in a word, you hit uh, virtual key press, you'd say, let's just say this is our F23 button, I'm going to add that, and then let's just go ahead and put a background color in it, and it's weird you put that to show the background color, I hit save, and then this button shows up here. If this screen was open on your phone right now, it would actually immediately show up on your phone. And the, the second important thing, because there's so many different things that the buttons can do that I'm not going to talk about, the only ones that are important for reason are, I think, the virtual key press, and then the other one that's important is go to page, which is self-navigation for the app itself. And so you can see that this reason landing page actually sends the phone software back to show the page that is my first the, my first page. So this will show you, go to page action in here, shows you all of your own internal, um, your own internal pages that you've built and you can assign them there. So that is programming your buttons and then we will talk about how to communicate with your phone and that will wrap it up. Now I want to talk about communication between the phone and the app because it's a little quirky. So this view has, this is my physical phone over here, and then we've got our desktop that is open over here. And right off the bat, you can see that they are set to different screens. And if I navigate to a screen on the desktop app, it doesn't change the screen on my phone. So it doesn't navigate to a new part of my phone. So this, now let's talk about how you actually push changes to your phone. All right, so the right hand column is actually really effective in pushing changes to the phone because some changes you'll make and you'll think why didn't that show up there and the easiest way to do it is you think you can make a change over here and then these changes are non-destructive and so by doing this you may have noticed that the phone actually just changed is that the icons are shrinking over here as they go up here this will make any changes to this page itself all right Adding a new button does push to the phone immediately. So if you're on the same screen, it does push to the phone. But now let's just show And this. I'm gonna go over to my Reason Transport page. I've got this empty button here that's available. I'm just gonna put some button text in here so that on the desktop app, then we have this garbled text there. And now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna to navigate to the transport page on the phone and you can see that that button still hasn't filled in over there with those words. And so when you are editing on the desktop, if you're not on the same page as you are on the phone, then it won't push, but an easy way to make that change is to change the number of rows and columns there. And so it immediately, so as soon as I changed it, it pushed. When Little note is that if you add images, background colors, or various style elements to it, sometimes they don't push for two or three times. And that can be a little bit, think, oh, did it work, did it not work? Um, it seems that the key press actions always immediately translate to it. So those are the kind of quirky pieces, but for me, it's definitely not a big deal to make any big screaming about it, because I think that it's awesome. So that is a wrap on this. I hope that you're excited about it. I am going to be doing more videos uh, about Reason. Uh, since I don't have my nectar anymore, I miss it, but I'm probably going to change the channel name. But if you like my content, like, subscribe. Um, I'm in the Facebook uh, group for Reason. My name's Mark. And uh, get out there and be doing some cool stuff with Reason. I will now especially have this. I'm super excited. My next video, I'm going to do one about assigning the keys to the way I did my mutes, but it's gotten long here, so that will come soon. All right, I will see you uh, out in Reason World. <laughs>